A lot of animals live inside a hole. Some make their own burrow. Some just use some random holes they find. Some of those close their burrow, either with dirt or detritus. But that's not entirely convenient, isn't it? That's why some of those animals become the door themselves. Sounds ridiculous, but it's real. So, let me broad up the question. What exactly is phragmosis? Phragmosis is the phenomenon where an animal uses their body to close a tubular burrow. Phragmosis as a term was first suggested by Wheeler in his publication back in 1927. The word phragmosis is taken from the Greek word phragmos, which means barrier. In phragmosis, the part of the animal that is used as a barrier usually fits tightly into their burrow. That's why their predators couldn't infiltrate their burrow nor pick them off from their burrow. There are many animals that exhibit phragmosis, and each of those animals have their own evolution, and of course, each uses different structure with various effectiveness. I'm gonna talk about some of the examples I know. If you are a herpetologist, or at least a reptile enjoyer, you would most likely know about Disney, but I don't think most people do. This is Uropeltidae or more commonly known as the shield-tailed snakes. They can be found in India and Sri Lanka, but those who live in Southeast Asia might be familiar with their sister taxa, the pipe snakes, Cylindrophidae and Anomochilidae. So, looking at this image, you could probably guess why it's called the shield-tailed snake. While I don't think there is any comprehensive analysis on their tail usage, one of the suggestions is it's useful to block their burrow, which is phragmosis. But still, I want to emphasize that this is not conclusive. A group of anurans called the cask-headed frog exhibit phragmosis by having thickened head. They flex their head at a 90 degree angle to block the entrance of their hole. This posture is usually known as the chin tucking behavior, or intuitively, Phragmotic posture. Even though their head might not look that special, they actually have a strongly ossified cranium with sculptured spiny dermal bones that together form the cask. Point being, they are quite hard. Not only that, most of them have granular venom glands which help deter predator or any other intruders. The oldest publication of phragmosis in anurans that I know of is the observed behavior of Ternohylophodians, or is now known as Miliscaphodians. It was suggested in 1926 by Barbour that this frog could use their head cask to block tree holes, but later it was known that they live in vertical burrows on the ground, which makes their phragmosis more effective of course. Triprion petasatus were also observed to exhibit phragmosis behavior in 1935. Even so, the most famous phragmotic frog is the Coritomantis greeningi. Not only their cask head serves as plug, their coloration also helps camouflage them as a tree bar. The detailed observation and anatomy analysis was published in 2005. That was the first time the comprehensive analysis on phragmosis in frog was published. That publication started more observations of this behavior, and so, more phragmotic frogs were also known and published. It was hypothesized that phragmosis behavior in frogs evolved to prevent water loss, since most cask-headed frogs live in arid habitats. Argenteohila simersi breaks this stereotype by living in humid environment. They show phragmotic posture when captured but they don't exhibit true phragmosis behavior in their holes, so they are considered semi-phragmotic. Next, let's talk about the animals where the term phragmosis came from in the first place. Insects. But before that… The most studied animals with phragmosis are ants. Ants are social creatures that live inside a complex nest. Protecting their nest is important for the colony to survive. That's why a lot of them exhibit phragmosis. Most of you had probably seen this image right here. This is Cephalotes farians, also known as the turtle ant. Most uses this ant as an example for phragmosis, 
but there are actually a lot of ants that exhibit phragmosis, each with their unique twist. Some ant species exhibit phragmosis in their soldiers, such as in the genus Camponotus. Some exhibit phragmosis in their workers, such as Colobopsis nipponicus. Some are even in the queen itself, like the Carebara lamellifrons. Some block the entrance with one individual, while some exhibit cooperative phragmosis where several individuals block the entrance together. Some have a modified cranium, while some have modified clipeus and mandible. Some have all of them. Meanwhile, the queen of Phaedole and Bolopix uses their gaster. Some beetles also exhibit phragmosis. The keyhole Ambrosia beetle, Amasa truncata have a flat posterior. That's their elytra, by the way, the leathery forewings of beetle that covers their hind membranous wings. They create chambers for their eggs on trees, so they bore head first and covers the entrance with their posterior. Similar behavior and form can be seen in the Ips pini, which is commonly known as the North American pine engraver. Suggestion of Phragmosis and Trichoptera larvae was made and published in 2023. These Trichoptera larvae make case where they reside. Even though this case is portable, and they carry it around, the case is indeed a form of tunnel when you think about it. This publication listed over 30 species of caddisflies which larvae may exhibit Phragmosis based on their morphology but further observation and tests need to be done to determine whether they do exhibit phragmosis or not. Phragmosis can also be observed in other arthropods, namely, spider. In fact, it's one of the most famous examples of phragmosis. A lot of you might be familiar with trapdoor spiders. They are spiders that make burrows on the ground and covers their burrow with trapdoors made out of webbings, soils, and detritus. That's the usual trapdoor spider. Some of these trapdoor spiders are not good at spinning webs, so instead of making a trapdoor, they became the trapdoor themselves. For example, the genus Cyclocosmia. I know that sounds really weird for English speaker, so just call it Cyclocosmia if that's easier for you. They have truncated posterior that they use to cover their burrow. This is a hardened disc. When a small insect steps on it, they can shrink it so the insect falls down and they can eat it. While they are still called trapdoor spiders, they are now placed outside the main trapdoor spiders family. A lot of them can be found in China towards the Southeast Asia, but some can be found in Mexico and USA. When you look at their posterior, it might look like an ancient coin. So when you found an ancient coin on the ground, don't casually pick it up. Well, they are not venomous though, but some of you might be arachnophobic, and that can be quite a shock. In general, we understood the requirement to evolve phragmosis. That is, a tunnel-like place to reside, and a tight enough entrance that can be closed. We started to pay extra attention when an animal resides in this kind of nest. Especially, if they have an enlarged and flattened body parts. The recent publication on caddisfly larvae which I talk about in this video shows that we might even found a lot more phragmotic animals in the future. So, who knows what kind of animals will be found out to be phragmotic. Perhaps we'll find another one soon enough. But for now, let's just learn what is known. And that's all for now. Oh, by the way, Phragmosis is effective to defend against their natural predators, of course, but if a predator or any potential threat can peer through their body parts, it's not really that effective. Anyway, enjoy your day.